What's up, everyone? Welcome to the January 19th edition of DraftKings Tournament Plays presented by Prize Picks. I'm your host, Adam Scherer. You can find me on Twitter at ChipMyMoneyDFS. And as a reminder, you get one free month of Osmo Plus Platinum when you sign up and make a deposit at Prize Picks. Be sure to use the code Osmo to receive a 100% first deposit bonus up to $100. Today, we have a massive 13 game NBA DFS slate. We're going to take a look at five of the top tournament options on DraftKings. Keep in mind that there's a lot of news that we're waiting on and plenty of things are going to change between now and lock. So be sure to tune into the deeper dive from 5 to 6 Eastern and live before lock from 6 p.m. up until tip for more up-to-date information. But for now, taking a look at five of the top tournament options on DraftKings, starting at number five with Kyle Kuzma. He's $7,800, small forward and power forward eligible, taking on the Brooklyn Nets tonight in Washington. Kuzma is only projected for about 4% ownership with a 9% chance of being in the optimal lineup. I understand why Kuzma is not pulling a ton of ownership. His salary has come up a bit because he's played really well recently, and the Wizards are as healthy as they've been all season long. Uh, last game, I believe, was the first game they've played all year where all of their rotation players were actually available. You only got 29 minutes from Kuzma in that game, but he did lose about three minutes to garbage time. And it's always possible that he picks up a few more minutes. But um, I think it is reasonable to expect we start getting 32, 33 minutes from Kuzma instead of 37 or 38, which makes the salary a little bit difficult to stomach. But on the other hand, Kuzma has been extremely good over the last month, really regardless of who he's been on the floor with. He's averaged 1.22 DraftKings points per minute over that time, and people can point to the fact that Bradley Beal missed some games, the Washington front court was shorthanded, so you were essentially getting Kuzma as the backup center for some of those games, but realistically, if you look at really any sample that you want over that period of time, you can put Bradley Beal on the floor. Kuzma still has a 25.8% usage rate compared to 21.6% for the entire season. You can put Daniel Gafford on the floor, or you can put Montrez Harrell on the floor, and Kuzma still has a 16.5% rebounding percentage compared to 14.5% for the season. So I do think that Kuzma has just emerged as the clear number two scorer for Washington playing alongside Beal. I think that they are intentionally getting him rebound opportunities. Uh, He's doing a very good job of getting those boards. So at virtually no ownership, there is still a high ceiling here, even though uh, the, the salary makes it so there's not a lot of margin for error. Number four, Terrence Davis, $5,300 for the Kings taking on the Detroit Pistons. This game should be absolutely awful to watch, but it has a lot of potential to be a good DFS game because neither one of these teams play any defense. The Kings are expected to get Marvin Bagley back tonight. I don't think that should have too much of an impact on Terrence Davis. The reason is that if you think it's going to drastically take minutes away from Davis, that would require Metu or Bagley to play at the three, which I feel pretty comfortable saying isn't going to happen. I think the only way that it really has a negative impact on Davis is that you're going to get less Harrison Barnes at the four. So instead of playing like 37 and a half minutes like you did last game, I think there's a good chance that you get around 30 minutes or so from Davis, assuming he remains in the starting lineup in place of Tyrese Halliburton. But Davis is someone that's averaged 1.01 DraftKings points per minute this year. So at $5,300 against the Detroit Pistons, I don't need 38 minutes for him to pay off a $5,300 salary. He's currently projected for only 8% ownership with a 10% chance of being in the optimal lineup. And he has shooting guard and small forward eligibility. Number three, Kevin Love, $5,300 power forward center option tonight for Cleveland. He is projected for 8% ownership with a 10% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Cleveland is taking on the Chicago Bulls tonight. Now, we can't feel very good about Love's playing time, given that uh, Jared Allen is active, Evan Mobley is active. We know that both of those guys cut into his playing time. But he has played 10 games this year where Colin Sexton has been out, Ricky Rubio has been out, and both of Mobley and Allen have been active. In those games, Love has only averaged 22.7 minutes per game, but he's also averaged 1.22 DraftKings points per minute. So at his current price tag, if you get those 22 or 23 minutes, he still actually projects as a decent option. And then if you do get foul trouble for Allen or Mobley, there's the potential for Love to pick up a few more minutes, in which case he likely becomes a tournament winning play. Number two, John Collins, 7K, power forward center eligible, 11% projected ownership, 13% chance of being in the optimal lineup. He looks good with Clint Capella out tonight. We know that Aneko Okongwu was starting at center again for the Hawks. Okongwu played 36 minutes last game. In his previous start, he had played like 24 minutes. So the playing time can kind of be all over the place. But based on the rotation we saw last game, it's very likely that Collins remains the backup center tonight. So that could mean 12 minutes of center. It could mean 24 minutes of center. We don't really know. But what we do know is that 
Without Clint Capella on the floor this season, John Collins has averaged 1.12 DraftKings points per minute. He's at 1.04 when you put an, um, a Kongwu on, but then he's obviously even higher when you take a Kongwu off. So on average, we can expect around 1.12 DraftKings points per minute from Collins. That's compared to 0.96 DraftKings points per minute when Capella is on the floor. So it's a pretty cheap price tag for Collins, and he should get a production bump without Capella. And then the number one tournament option on the slate, LaMarcus Aldridge, $4,600 center tonight against Washington, projected for 8% ownership with a 17% chance of being in the optimal lineup. Now, I do want to kind of caution that I think the optimal lineup percentage may come down between now and lock. We currently have him projected for 27 or 28 minutes, which in my opinion, at least is a little bit aggressive. He only played 22 and a half minutes off the bench behind Dayron Sharp last game. As long as he doesn't start, you know, continues to come off the bench. I have a hard time expecting him to play more than 24 minutes, though it's certainly possible. But that being said, at only 8% ownership with right now a 17% chance of being in the optimal lineup, you can kind of scale that back a little bit and see that he's still projected to be under-owned here. He's been very productive off the bench this year, 1.14 DraftKings points per minute. So even if he does play 24 minutes or so, you're likely to get a good performance from him at only $4,600. So to recap, the top five tournament options on DraftKings, Kyle Kuzma, Terrence Davis, Kevin Love, John Collins, and LaMarcus Aldridge.